Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now, this might not appear to people in foreign countries to be top gourmet food, but in fact it's one of the most traditional British meals. Beans on toast. It's good, it's protein. Mmm, we love it, don't we? Especially kids. Mmm. Mmm. Beans on burnt toast. Even better, because I made it myself. Mmm. But, tell you what else like these beans on toast? Not so much the toast, the beans. Fish love them. Yes, fish love beans. You want to know how to prepare them? Hmm, I'll finish this, or most of it, and then we'll get outside and show you. Now there's only one way to buy your beans. It's bulk and it's cheap. And if you go into some of those pound shops we have up in the UK here, you can sometimes get one, two, three big tins, about a pound. Now, how do you prepare them? Well, don't forget, these are for human consumption. If we can eat them, the fish can eat them. They come in tomato sauce, as you know. I personally don't like them in tomato sauce. So empty all the cans straight out into water. I'm going to wash them all out like this. Pile them all in there and give them a good old wash off. I'll leave the water in the bottom to get every single last bean out. So if you find they get stuck in the bottom, just get yourself a fork and stir them all out, hopefully not splashing it in your face like I've just done. Get all those beans in the water and then you can give them a good rinse out. Always leave a little bit like this water in there. You stir it all out. Now the other thing you can do is you can do all this and then, do you know what, you can even freeze them if you wanted because once that tin's opened, obviously they're supposed to be human consumption, we're supposed to eat them. You wouldn't want to leave them two or three days and then have beans on toast. But you can actually, once they're all treated, freeze them. Get the last of these out and then I'll show you what we do next. Do all this at home before you go fishing. Do not bother taking the uh, tins and opening them at the fisheries because some of them will ban tins and rightly so because for some obscure reason anglers still seem to open tins and throw them in the bushes. Now why would you do that? If you bought it with you why don't you take it back? It's so simple to me but then I am simple. Right, they're all in there. This comes a good bit. I don't want to smash them up. I just want to rinse them like this. See, I want to wash as much as that tomato off as I, as I can. And the next phase is you're going to think, how on earth is you going to get those out? And it's easy because the wife's away and I'm going to use her best colander. Put all your old tins and lids into a bag. Don't leave them laying around because the edges of these are sharp in a bag, tie knot on it, it's ready for the rubbish bin. Right, next phase. Take mum's colander, don't tell her what you're doing, and do it, you can, you can do it in the sink if you want, but I don't just do it outside. And strain all those beans off. Here they come. My goodness, should be easy. Now you can see I've washed most of that tomato off. Now what you can do, you can put these, you can, you can put, say there's almost two, two bait tubfuls there. You can put these into a plastic bag. You can put some colouring in if you want to put some colouring in. You can put some flavouring as well if you want flavouring in. I don't bother, I just use these plain and I'll just show you this one here. As I say, it's, it's what humans eat. It's nice and soft. Look, just barely squeeze it, pop. It just goes to mush, so it's okay for the fish. It's okay for humans. Put it in some bait tubs and we're ready to go. You can see there, there's absolutely plenty in there for sessions fishing. Five, six cans, 
the job's done. Now, I keep those, if I was going, say, tomorrow, we're going to be going tonight, if I was going tomorrow, I'd put those in the fridge to chill overnight. You can keep them for, say, a couple of days in the fridge and still use them. And as they get cooler, you know, they're chilled, these have been in the sun. As they get cooler, they go a little bit harder, but not so hard the fish can't crunch them down with their throat teeth. So, next thing to do, you totally awesome guys know, let's have water. Right, we're down here at the fishery. Regular day ticket water, not some secret place all cordoned off for us. Day ticket, um, just an evening one. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon, so they do a four o'clock ticket. But what I'm gonna do before I put the beans out, I'm gonna just put a little bed down of, of ground bait, just so he gets the small fish going. And that activity, the small fish, will then draw in, we hope, something a bit bigger, maybe some bream, bigger roach, maybe the old carp comes in here. So what I've got is my regular ground bait, which I've been using, yeah, quite wet, I can use this. Now this bean fishing, this bean fishing is all margin fishing because they're a soft bait. So guys that want to cast it miles, different ball game. You know, you can't cast those beans miles. It's close to medium range, I would say. So I've got what's called Bailey's number one horse feed for ground bait because it's as cheap as chips, it's really good quality. Into that I've got some sort of halibut and pellet mix or whatever, a little powdered up ground bait just to give it a little bit of a smell. And then I'm going to put this in just loose, you can see it's really sloppy. I'm putting in sloppy because I'm fishing a rod length out. That's all I'm fishing. And then I'm going to put the beans over the top. I'm just in. I'm going to double swim here with Mike. Mike's going to fish next to the rushes here. And we're going to scatter the beans, let that settle first, and scatter the beans over the top. And we just go around and do the other swim as well. I'm going to fish just around here. It looks all big and open. You think, my God, I want to cast out miles to that island up there. Well, no, I'm going to try margin fishing. So, I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to try a little bit straight out, just to make a little carpet of bait out there. Get those small fish coming around, and then the beans go over the top. Right, but listen, here's a little tip. I'm putting some here, just scattering it here. Because later in the evening, those carp are going to come around, and a lot of guys, when they finish at, say, 3 or 4 o'clock, if they've got matches, they finish at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30, they just get their bait tub and they go, bosh! Empty it out, wash it out, because they want it nice and clean to go home with. You think the carp don't know that? You think the roach, the rad, the tench don't know that? They know it. They're going to come in there. We might be able to get lucky and pick a fish off so close to the bank. Probably wouldn't even need a fishing rod. Right, on the subject of beans, you may... Oh, I smell lovely. I almost eat them. Um, you may notice like a, a white powder. What I've done is I've dried these a bit with ground bait. Now, this is a totally awesome fishing tip. Because I'm fishing close in, that stops them going too gunky, it draws up a bit of that moisture, but more important, those little grains will stick to the bean, hit the surface, and as it goes down, the beans sink, and those grains will come off over the top of it. So basically, it's a sort of double whammy ground bait. There, you can see it in my hand. Like a double whammy ground bait, and I'm just going to put a few down there. Just like that, and you can see the bits of ground bait down there actually coming off the beans as I drop them. There, you can see it, the ground bait's a bit slower sinking. Put a few out there because I did put a handful. I always throw the odd handful or so of any bait, you know, close into the margin. There's so many fish I've picked up just if I've been struggling out there, I might get lucky and get one fish. I'm going to chuck these beans out, two or three of these handfuls to start with, about that size, I don't know, 20, 30 beans, scatter them out there, and I'm going to get rigged up. Now, don't be afraid when it's quiet like there's not many people on the fishery. Take a little bit of bait like this, walk around, look for something like an overhanging bush side of some reed somewhere like that and just get rid of what's left in your in your pot in your tub here because you can walk around there later on and if it's quiet where we are fish could move in here and on the last hour you might walk around and think I'll oh, just take a look at that swim and see if there's anything in there you may be very very surprised I mean, guys, I'm just rigging up. We didn't get a chance to switch the camera on. 
I thought, I use my tinkly winkly little top 4,000 mirrors because I like the tune they make when a fish hooks up at close range. I looked down, I've, I've just threaded through the rings, I haven't rigged up. And in the time it took us to do this, I saw one, I swear not, it looked like a ghost carp, very, very white light colour. Literally down there, it had to be six to eight pounds and I could see its back come out, right down by the, where I where just literally, I could almost touch it where I threw those beans in, right there. Oh, it's got me all a quiver now. That's the trouble, isn't it? When you see things like that, you can't thread the line through the rings, your hands are shaking. This is 50 years up the road, I'm still shaking. Man, I'd love to hook a fish at close range. When you hit a fish down there, I'm telling you, all you guys that follow us are totally awesome. We, they know how they fish. If you fish long range with a three pound test curve rod, fine, that's okay, you will catch fish. No question, it's a very successful method. You hit one on an Avon rod, under your rod top, and it, it turns into a smoker, that is what the pinnacle of fishing is about, close range fishing. It is for me anyway. Well, that must have been two minutes or less, guys. I missed one hit and uh, baited up again with three bait beans this time. I went for a bit more bait and then um, threw half a dozen out on top of the bait and literally within 30 seconds of putting it down on the bite alarm, setting the bite alarm, I'm into a fish. A great thing about these Avon rods is look at that bend. Even for the small fish. Oh, he's oh, come off. Oh, he's pinged off. Why do we say about the bend in the rod? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, was that fast or what? That's it's really quick. Yeah, that was minutes. It is. Right, let's get it back out. Back out there again. Three beans. I'm going to change mine. Well, listen, I thought a single bean would do it. And Mike's got uh, three beans on. But three beans on. Hello. <laughs> fish, 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 fish. In? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is what? Less than a minute it's of not, talking about mine. It's not very big. What is that? Take the bobbin off, I won't lose. That looks a bit breamy to me. Ah, another species. It's not very big. It does look like a bream. There we Skim. go. Skim. Well, yours was a carp, because that really yeah. had the rub whacked over. A power pack bream. And that was less than a minute, I would say, of, of, yeah. of me just losing that fish just then. They're straight on, they're absolutely straight on those beans. And that's in my swim, isn't it? That's in the other swim. <laughs> right. There we go, people, look. A bream, actually, is that a bream or is it a bit hybrid -y, that one? I suppose it is a bream. Mm, yeah, it's quite light coloured though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a light coloured bream. Anyway, it's a fish, and look, uh, just hooks. Let's put him on the mat, get him unhooked. Well, he's not he's not a monster, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> we haven't been here five minutes, and I've never even fished up this end of the lake before. I've only been here about twice, and that was three years ago. Back in the water, let's get those out. Right, in again, on the treble beans. <laughs> The three bait beans, just lightly hooked, cast a rod length out, right by just off these reeds here. The fish do know they're there though, so it does tend to kite left a bit, but now we can appreciate the bend. Hopefully we can, yeah. hopefully we can land it. They dig in, don't they, when they're getting close? Yeah, you just feel every every head shake with these rods. And that twinned with the little TikTok reel we got here, it was screaming off when he took it. We've only got a light, what, SSG type shot. Just a single, it? yeah, it's not bad, it's not a bad mirror. Yeah, That's is it a mirror? Common, oh, maybe a common even, yeah. A common mirror. <laughs> common as muck. Uh, now I'll get you the net, which for a change is totally awesome, is close, yeah. by, close by. Yeah, it's a nice common. He's coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming, then he's going, then he's coming. Yeah, the best thing I like about these chairs, not the maker, that's just right for filming. That is just so perfect for filming. You can film and sleep at the same time. Yeah. Right. You've got no time to sleep with baked beans. No. You can see the little split shot just slid Yeah, slid, slid, slid down, I think, yeah. yeah. And he's in. Now, I've got to get the unhooking mat from your swim. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Lovely looking, pristine little common. A lot of energy to this one, so we won't keep him out of the water for too long. Just goes to show, cheap bait, prepared in about 10 minutes. Didn't even take 10 minutes to prepare your bait cast out we're here for a three or four hour session just good fun fishing well guys I was right about fishing close in here <laughs> I tried it with the link ledger didn't like that it just didn't feel right because it's so close so I thought I wonder about free lining a double bean you know just the weight of the bean going down and that seemed you know a little bit too light so I just put a single BB shot about a foot from the two beans bingo away we go and he lost a rod actually went racing in and it is a common with a peculiar nose. By the look of it, 
but good fun. I mean, good fun on these rides, as Mike says. Really, really good fun. Well, baked beans are quite fragile things when you got, when you uh, try to get them on the hook. They tend to they can tend to fall fall apart quite easily. So try and if you can just gently squeeze it. See if you can go for a hard one. I'm using just a, it's a I don't know what size it is. Probably a ten, ten or something. Yeah, barbless hook there. There's my baked bean, and I'm just going to nick it almost on the edge, really, of the vertical edge, and I, you've got to really gently push it round and follow the bend of the hook because it's so easy for these to fall off. So that that there is through. I'll slide that up a tiny bit more so it's near the eye of the hook and I've got space for one more bit of corn there. Bean. Bean, sorry. <laughs> and there we go, I've got space there for the second bean. Oh, that, see that one fell apart. Doesn't matter too much, it's just trying to nick it on the edge. You've got to be really careful because they can fall apart quite easily. So this one I just want to push to the top of the hook, and I'm going to leave that like that. So I've got the, the hook showing. You, you might think there's actually quite a bit of hook showing there. These carp, when they start feeding, they, especially at this time when all the bait's in there, they're definitely, they won't be too bothered about that. Well, I've had a carp with a, a bait presented exactly like that, and it was fine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for double double uh, bean this time. Just chuck it out. There's the small split shot there to stop the kind of running, running SSG here on a small, you can see that. This is one of Dad's kind of bodge job yeah, running, link ledger. running link ledges things, yeah. Standard little, link little ledger. Little swivel, what, eight inch, two inches of, of sort of line there. Yeah, drop, just a two small shot. Drop. It's a dead simple rig. And then that split shot to stop the, well, there's about a foot there, if you can see that. 12 inch drop, yeah. Yeah, about a foot onto the bait. That's it, such a simple rig. And then careful swinging it down. You don't want to swing your bait about too much. And it's just a straight underarm swing out, pendulum swing. Sink the line as soon as you cast. Then we'll come down to this end, get your bobbin, hook it over the line, gently pull down so the line's tight. I need to wind on the reel, reel a bit there because that's too slack. I'm watching the rod tip as well, checking that the line's tight. I don't want to pull my bait too far because it'll be out of the baited area and the beans will come off the hook because they're that gentle. So there. I can feel it's tight to the line now so I can gently pull it to about there. So I can look for any drop back, drop back bites as well, and then handful of three or four beans just over where I cast. And I think the noise does it as well, really, of dropping those beans in. And then it's a case of sit back, get ready on your rod. You have to strike quite quickly with the beans. I've noticed because no self hooking, is it? There's no, no. You've got to be because it's such a light lead. They don't tend to hook themselves at all. It's all. It's quite good fun fishing, really. You've got to be really alert. As soon as that couple of bleeps, watch your bob in there as well, whoosh, into a fish. We, got, we chose this end of the uh, lake because we did see a few when we first got here on the surface just sitting there. Um, it's always good. Oh, that's you, Dad. Has he? I've had a blip as well. I think he's dropped yours. Yeah. Um, it's always good. Well, we, we, it's always really good to walk, walk the lake before you get, before you put your rods out. But we just happened to come around the first corner of the lake that we got to and we saw three or four quite nice carp really just sitting on the surface. When we got actually got here to put the baits out, they'd gone because they got a bit spooked. But the wind's coming into this end of the bank as well. I can see bits of leaves and things on the surface coming this way. It's all good signs that uh, the sort of flies and things, anything else that natural baits that the carp would eat would be in this area in this swim. And we've had one or two fish already, so we must be in the right spot. Well, another little small bream here. A lot more docile than the uh, than the old carp, and he's just nicked those little bites that Mike was getting. Really, you know, is definitely what I think these are. So the bream must have moved in on the beans as well. Let's get him back. I feel we might have a few more fish, but at least you know you can see that this this method does work. The method beans on you know on the bed close in works, and there's you know part of the proof of it.
Well, there we go, guys. A single bean is definitely what the bream are wanting. No question of that. Come here, hold still, you. Fame, but no fortune for this chappy. So there you go. I went straight down to a single bean, and these are the culprits that I'm getting in this swim. Mike's getting the bites, but he's picking up carp as well. So beans really good, good for these chappies. Back you go. Oh, oh, I heard the buzzers going that time. Yeah, the old TikTok's gone off. Well, you just after you've had that bream, I changed my rig a bit now. Um, because Dad's been getting the bream, and we've been getting these small, kind of nibbly bites, um, and those beans are quite soft, I've actually gone for a hair rig, two beans on the end of a small hair, uh, just purely because I don't want to keep catching bream, and that way they can have a nibble at the uh, beans, and then I don't have to worry about accidentally hooking them, and I can wait for a big carp to come along and suck it up. So luckily, the plan worked, changing to the hair rig, and if I can land this, it looks like a common, if I can land this fish, Dad's just gone to get the net as usual. If I can land this, then I'll, well, I'll show you anyway, even if it comes off, I'll show you the rig that I was using. That's not a bad one. Yeah, it's quite a nice fish. It's, it's been going well. This one's not that small, guys. It's going well. I'll tell you what, it's got a lot of energy, this one. There's your TikTok going. Guys, don't forget, if you if you get a fish that's going for snags on the side, don't be afraid to pull the opposite direction of the of the snag like Mike is. Put some side strain and turn it away because they will bury in there and you will lose it. This fish is just going and going. And He's going. really bending the Avon rod. Yeah. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> And Dad's over there. I'm getting screaming, run here. And Dad's just hooked up over there. That is some fight you have in there. I just can't get this. This fish is just absolutely... Every time his head comes up, he goes it. It's only a small one, but it's just... But guys, this is what you want. This is what you want. The nice and small, you can get them easy. Yeah, Might be able to show you two species on the mat, on baked bean. Both caught at the same time. This is what you call... Double family, trouble. family fishing. It yeah, is. Or double trouble. It's what we used to do when I was a kid, wasn't it? Yeah. When you used to take me. Nice back carp. To... Good carp. Guys, a nice bream. Biggest bream for me. That's my evening. biggest carp of the day. Definitely. Lovely, yeah, that's good. Lovely one, yeah. common that. Gave me a hell of a scrap. This fish. So you want a herring, uh, herring, herring bream? Herring bean. That, that's a big bait. <laughs> bean and bream. Yeah. So you got herring to uh, bean. Bean there, single. Yeah. Is that double, a, double, double herring. And I'm on a single and I'm starting to nail these one after the other now. Yeah. Fantastic fishing. Baked beans. It works. Well, I just, we just, I just landed that carp and we had to double hook up the carp and the bream. I said to you I'd, I'd moved over to the hair rig, still with two grains of corn, of uh, bean. But I'll just show you now. I've literally just, so we've got the same kind of running ledger thing here with Dad's... Uh, link ledger. Link ledger there. Up to a small swivel where I've just got probably a four inch hook length, same line, still the main line. And then, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we're right on it. Yeah, there's the hair, it's a bit bent now. Onto the size 10 still, barbless, small hair. And I'll just show you now what I've got down here. So here are my old school baiting needles. Now, because we're only doing an evening session, it's, it's important really to have them pre-made ready. So as soon as I've cast out, I've got three baiting needles here. Those two are ready to go on. And then I've got a spare one here. So here I've got two beans. The, I've noticed I've, I've tried keeping the beans out in the sun and seeing if that hardens them. It does harden the beans, but it makes them a lot, they crumble on the uh, hook or they, the spike of the hair, of the needle, sorry. So here we go. I go down here. I've just got a soft bean, goes through the middle. Make sure you push evenly each side. I'm gonna go for another bean as well here. Through the middle of the spike. They might break, like that one's about to break. If they break, doesn't matter, I've just broken that off. I'm gonna go through this half to the top. That's there. Then with my rig, which is just here, there's the hair. I'm gonna spike that, get that, catch that little barb on the tip of the hair. Slide the beans down. Twist that out. Now these are just a bit of, you can get plastic hair stops from shops. I've literally cut up a bit of dead grass here 
bit of recycling, there's a bit of bean that's going to fall off here, so I'll just do one bean. Bit of old school thinking there, old use school. the grass. So there, a bit of dead grass, I'm pushing that against there, then with a pair of scissors, just along there, snip there, uh, because that other bean fell off because it was a dodgy bean, but there we go. Yeah, it shows you that, did it? There's one bean, there's my hook, the bean, nice eco fishing there with a bit of dead grass. For example, there's a strip of grass, I just, you can see them here, I just cut them into sort of half inch, one inch strips and then I can trim them. And that is literally it. So I had double bean and that's what caught me that carp just now. And Riff. that's what you got ready, they're all prepared there. I'm going so I've on got that. them ready now here. Two kebabs, more. kebabs, bean yeah, just, kebabs. just all ready, that way if I either snag or I have a fish, I don't want to have to faff around with the beans again. So as soon as I've cast this out, I'll bait that third needle up there, I'll bait this up again. So then I've got three baits already, I've cut up all the hair stops. And with those short, ses short sessions like that in the summer, we're only doing three or four hours. You want everything ready. So let's go. And then guys, did you remember that I came around with Mike when we first got, you know, when we first got here, when we first arrived, and I and I chucked some bait and some beans right in close to another swim further up the bank so you can always walk around later if nobody goes in there, see if there's anything about. Now, I've walked around here, it's absolutely mud, stern beyond belief. So it's all stirred up, it's all mixed up. I know there's fish in there. I haven't seen any what we call swirls where their tail is heads down on the bottom of their tail is disturbing the surface but I'm just going to lower a double bean in here free lining, no weight at all just give it five or ten minutes and just see if we can hook one right under our feet Well, there you go people, that was on free line beans again. I came around the opposite side of Mike and cast into the bay. Basically I was pinching his swim and coming in from the other side. Did it pay off? You tell me. Beautiful, what a lovely fish. And are we going home yet? Well, probably in a minute because we're running out of beans. <laughs>